A transverse fracture of the mandibular angle is treated with a 2.0 mandible locking plate, positioned on the oblique ridge, as described by Champy. The objectives of this exercise are to understand the principles of load sharing across the fracture, the basic principles of a locking plate, and the correct application of the 2.0 mandible locking plate at the oblique ridge. Loading across a mandible angle fracture leads to tensional forces at the oblique ridge and compressive forces at the lower border. These tensional forces can be borne by a 2.0 locking plate positioned at the oblique ridge of the mandible. The compressive forces can be borne by the fracture surfaces, particularly at the lower border, provided there is an intact bony buttress. Therefore, load sharing takes place when the load across the fracture is shared between the fixation system and the fracture surfaces. Routine diagnosis of this type of fracture should include radiographs taken in two planes at 90 degrees to each other, such as a PA view and a panoral view. CT imaging may be used as an alternative. In a clinical situation, access to this fracture would be through an intraoral approach. In this exercise, the instruments needed are two bending pliers, the 1.5 mm drill bit with 6 mm stop, and a star drive screwdriver shaft with handle. Open reduction and stable internal fixation in the dentate patient begins with fixation of the occlusion. For this exercise, Ernst ligatures have been selected. However, it should be noted that many surgeons prefer MMF with arch bars because of the increased stability. A six-hole 2.0 mandible locking plate with center space is placed on the oblique ridge of the mandible along the ideal line of osteosynthesis as described by Champy. The plate must allow for at least two screws in each main fragment and sufficient distance between the fracture line and the closest screw hole. The two millimeter locking screw has a threaded screw head. In this exercise, a screw with a star drive recess is used, although a cruciform version is available. The locking plate has a corresponding threaded plate hole. During insertion, the locking screw engages and locks into the threaded plate hole. If necessary, the threaded plate hole also accepts non-locking screws, which permit greater angulation. Biomechanics With the conventional technique, the tightening of the screws presses the plate against the bone. This pressure generates friction, which contributes significantly to primary stability. However, with the locking screws engaged in the plate, the plate is not pressed onto the bone, therefore reducing interference to the blood supply. Loading forces are transmitted directly from the bone to the screws, then onto the plate, across the fracture, and again through the screws into the bone. Friction between plate and bone is not necessary for stability. On each side of the fracture, the screws are locked into the plate as well as into the bone. The result is a frame construct with high stability. Primary loss of reduction. When using conventional screws, it's essential to contour the plate precisely to the bone surface. Otherwise, the tightening of the screws will lead to a primary loss of reduction. However, if the plate is fixed with locking screws, reduction remains unchanged. Therefore, the plate does not have to be contoured as precisely as with conventional plating systems. Secondary loss of reduction. In conventional plating systems, screw loosening may lead to loss of reduction. In a locking system, screw loosening rarely occurs because the screw head is locked to the plate.
The 2.0 mandible locking plate is available in four sizes, with or without a center space. Small, medium, large, and extra large. The plate is contoured with bending pliers to match the anatomy. The first hole is drilled monocortically, close to the fracture, using the 1.5 mm drill bit with 6 mm stop. The drill must be held at 90 degrees to the bone for the threaded head of the locking screw to engage in the plate correctly. A 6 mm long, 2 mm screw is inserted but not fully tightened to allow for any plate adjustment. It's also possible to place the first screw into the proximal fragment to allow for reduction of the condyle bearing fragment with the help of the plate. Another hole is drilled on the other side of the fracture line. The second 2 mm screw is inserted. The remaining plate holes are filled with screws and they are all fully tightened. The Ernst ligatures can now be removed. The mandibular angle fracture is satisfactorily fixed, and the mandible is functionally stable. The clinical result is shown in the post-operative radiograph. One alternative to the 2.0 mandible locking plate is a 2.0 mandible mini plate. Another alternative would be a 2.0 mandible locking plate or a 2.0 mandible mini plate placed along the lateral aspect of the upper border using the transbuckle instrumentation. This exercise has highlighted the principles of load sharing between the fixation system and the fracture surfaces in a simple transverse fracture as described by Champy. In addition, the concept and advantages of a locking plate to help prevent primary and secondary loss of reduction have been shown. Here are the main steps once again. Reduction of the fracture and MMF with Ernst ligatures. Adaptation of the six-hole 2.0 mandible locking plate. And fixation of the plate to the oblique ridge.